Hey everyone, this is an unusual uh, video for me uh, interviewing an artist, Matt Lesniewski, who I've known for quite a while and whose career I've been following, who, whose progress as an artist I've been following. So I was eager to have a chat with him about the progress of an artist, but it's also uh, hoping to promote a little bit his crowdfunding of his next graphic novel. Um, so I think it's Faceless and the Family. So uh, check below for links in the description to his um, crowdfunding uh, of that book. And uh, I think he's got about 13 days left as this is as when this appears on YouTube um, to really make it worth his while and to encourage him to keep progressing and evolving as an artist. So uh, I hope you'll check that out, whether or not you have time to listen to the entire hour-long interview. But uh, anyway, enjoy, however much you do watch. So, hey, hey, everyone. It's Sleepy Reader, a.k.a. Damien. And I, whoops, I always point the wrong way. I've got a special guest. The first, Actually, the very first time I've had an artist on, but a longtime friend of the channel, Matt, a.k.a. Matt Lesninski. Did I, I probably pronounced it wrong? Lesniewski. It's no big deal. Uh, Is it Lesniewski? Lesniewski. Lesniewski. Okay, good. Yeah. And uh, Matt, you do you remember years ago sending me a message saying I could check out your comics? Of course. <laughs> and uh, I did. And you were letting people look at them for free digitally online. And as soon as I saw them, I had to get hard copies. I liked them so much. I didn't care if I could read them for free. I wanted the hard copies. Right, you have to do uh, that. <laughs> and of all the people who've out of the blue tried to get me to read their comics, you're the only one I became a fan of their work. <laughs> wow. So it's exciting for me to see how far you've come and how what a fantastic artist you've become. I mean, I thought your art was good to begin with, but I, I had no idea how far you'd go um, artistically. Um, Wow. You, you yes. haven't become rich and famous yet, but who knows? No, no, not exactly. <laughs> this is just the hallway of my mansion, as you can see. Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> Probably yeah. the servants usually stay there, but you decided to kick them out. Yeah, I, I needed to be quiet for this. Um, yeah, I, I was I was a fan of you actually years before that, and I was subscribed already, and I was, you know, watching the channel, I, and I liked how, you know, you, you were a comic book fan and you would just kind of give your comic book thoughts. Whereas a lot of other people would, you know, it was more of a, a harsh criticism or, uh -huh. and, and you made it very clear. These are just my thoughts and you gave your honest perspective on them. And I, I, I thought that was really cool. And I just thought, Hey, if I could get this guy to, you know, look at my stuff, that'd be really cool. And I, I just took the shot. I'm like, I might be able to, uh, reach him you might ignore it i don't know but um mm -hmm. well and, you've reached yeah. a lot of other people along ever <laughs> before and since then right um i you have this book the freak which went on to be nominated for an eisner and i never <laughs> in my stupidity i never look at the introductions but i noticed now that you had an introduction by jim rugg who was a fan of your work before this was published, I guess. Um, so he, he discovered your art and got excited by it. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was from uh, like that. I can't remember if it was before the recording or after you, you showed the uh, antique. Um, the freak was no different than antique where. Um, right. You, you published the first issue of it yourself. Yeah, expecting no one to really care or notice, but I still was trying with everything I had each time, uh, you know, hoping that I'd get the attention of a publisher or, mm -hmm. you know, just trying to break in, basically. And this was the one that finally got a lot of people's attention and finally won publisher uh took the chance on it right that uh, the thing. publisher's name i always forget ad house i think yeah ad house right and um 
yeah, they publish um, a bunch of Jim Ruggs stuff. And I actually think it was Ed Piskor who uh, was at, it was all at this one convention. I think it was 2018. And I, like I said, I brought that one, uh, the first issue of The Freak. Right. And they were all there. All of them were there. And I think Ed was the first one. I was, I was wandering around before the show started, you know, going at to other people's tables, just seeing who was there. And, and I started walking back to my table. The show's about to start. And I see this guy standing there really studying what's on my table. Mm-hmm. But I have no clue who he is. I, and I'm just like, oh, hey, how's it going? What, what's your name? And he, he said, oh, I'm Ed. And, uh, and, and he, he, I could tell he's really into it and he's like, yeah, this is good or whatever he said. And then he bought the, that issue and he was, he brought it back to his table or his area and he was showing it around and that's how they found it. And then it just kind of spread. And then maybe after the show, like a month or two after I started pitching that issue around, trying to get it published. And one of them was Ad House. And he said, uh, yeah, I don't know if you know this, but I actually, I already have the first issue. I was, I was at the show too. <laughs> and so that was, a, that was kind of a leg up too. And he, he must have, he also saw the excitement that was kind of bubbling up from this one issue. So that, that probably helped too. Um, so when you, like, let me, uh, <laughs> It's a little awkward switching between things. Here's a really early work of yours. Yeah. Uh, Arctic Hell. There was another one that I liked, and I can't find my copy. I'm moving my comics around right now to a storage space. Uh, one that was a post apocalyptic one with the guy who wanted to just be alone. <laughs> what, what was the title? Alone of again. That? Yeah, I remember you, that one. Do you remember the title of that one? Alone Again. Alone Again. Okay. Yep. Was this Arctic Hell even before that? Uh, yeah, yep. That so was this uh, is very early on. Yep, I actually it's already, uh, you know, as good as many published comics, <laughs> I think. But, um, you were self publishing then, and then you did that alone again. And, um, let me shift here to my other screen that I want to share. That's your that's your Zoop campaign. We'll talk about that a little more, but. Uh, I I will include a link below for people to check out your campaign to get your next self-published book, which is very exciting. But um, here's then what came next. So with, do you see like, uh, um, do you think about your own evolution as a uh, comics artist or does it just sort of happen without you ever... Do you mean, uh, do I kind of, uh, am I doing it on purpose or am I? Well, like, so I would say from like the Arctic hell and such to, to this antique antique, I can see the beginnings of the style that then becomes sort of full blown in the freak, right. That Mm -hmm. is, uh, you know, uh, a level of intensity and uh, weirdness level higher. Yeah. But there's a, a relationship there. Right. So, uh, and the reason I bring this up is because I think then after the freak, from what I see, your style changed yet again, and maybe a third time. I'm not sure because there's a book static. Yep. And then there's the art that I see. I'm I'm sorry. I'm a bit being a bit disorganized about this. In my no, head, no. I'm not very clear. <laughs> then there was a new kind of art style that started popping up around the time of Crimson Flower, and if I'm if I'm right in my theorizing about your artistic life, <laughs> then your your art style in Faceless and the Family is almost like taking that art style and going to an even higher level. So I was wondering if you think about. Like, okay, I've got this style and now I'm going to push it further. Or does it just kind of happen that way? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, to kind of put it simply, it is just one continuous, 
it's not really like a lot of artists i hear them talk about them going into a new book and all right this book is you know a, a horror book and i'm going to use a lot of dark shadows and i'm going to completely it's almost like they're selecting a flavor mm-hmm. whereas i'm more i've got my flavor and i'm just continually I, it's like i'm in a kitchen and i'm i'm adding new ingredients and i'm kind of i'm mastering this one steak recipe or, or something like that or this one feast and i'm continually you know building on that one thing and sometimes i'll take things out like like it on the thing that you have there with antique the gray tones i kind of tossed that to the side i actually forgot i was even doing that um so and then well when you i wish i could show this side by side with the freak but anyway i guess i'll go back to the freak i love the freak you may have <laughs> i mean i really enjoyed antique but when, once the art got to the level of the freak i was just very blown away well that one there was a uh right before i started that one um there was a big uh something kind of like shifted in my mind where um i mean yeah it's it it is it's still me it's the same style really but it's just kind of it's the next step but um right before starting it something uh something went off in my head and, and kind of told me all right this is enough this is enough being denied this is enough being ignored. They're going to, uh-huh. someone's going to see this. I'm going to do it in a way that even if people don't like it, they're going to have to respect it. They're uh-huh. going to see- you have to notice this art. Is that sort yes. of Yes. You're going to see that and be able to acknowledge, all right, there's something here. This is, I respect at least the level of work that went into this. Or, you know, there, there was a shift in mindset with that one where it was, but even still, Everyone I sent it to, it was a no until I got the one yes. Uh-huh. That's all you really need. So, Right. Well, I mean, there's a smaller number of comic book fans who get excited when they see something brand new or something less familiar. Which I'm, I'm learning more and more. <laughs> <laughs> and so I thought, I, me, you know, as a fan, my own view on things, I think that would be what you want you want to find something you haven't seen before but I, it, as it turns out that's it's got to be that mixed with other things yeah that's not enough i think the average person likes something that's familiar with a little splash of the new but not a whole yeah. lot of it Definitely. Uh, and i can see that in myself at times sure um but then at other times I get really excited. So when were you thinking of any other artists or you just like you had you worked on antique came and then this or was there anything in between there? Oh, um, I'm trying to think. Uh, oh, actually, I only got about five pages into this mm-hmm. and I just did um, actually have it. Um, Right over here. Where we live. Where we live. Yeah, and I just did a three or five page story in this. It was um, it was like a benefit book. Uh, it, it's just like a five page thing. I was asked to fill in last second, and I only had. And this was before, after Antique, but before Freak was published. I got five pages into it into the free and then i was asked to do this here's and i didn't write it either it's by uh kurt hires oh okay yeah i see a lot book. of comics by him and it was uh he wanted it to be a fully nine panels each oh, okay good job of this um, oh, what had he seen antique then or how did that end up happening um right? i think he he was following me on twitter at the time ah and he just, I think, um, yeah, he just, he, we were familiar with each other. And the artist, as I understand it, they backed out 
kind of last second. And I only had three days to do this. Right. Which I'm. That's a short well, amount of time, I would think, even for a fast artist. Yeah, definitely. So it was, but I couldn't turn down that, and I wanted to do it right. and for a good cause. And so yeah, there, there really wasn't much in between, but. Um, I got this uh, commission from you when we first met at uh, Rose City Comic Con, and okay. uh, I, I don't know if you had started on the freak yet then maybe no had. definitely not but the style then maybe your style started to evolve in the commissions you were doing after after antique perhaps um i don't know i'm just fascinated by how detailed and sort of crazy your style got if uh, crazy in a good way um uh, I'll i think the actual it, it was the freak itself that that was a big that was the shift mm -hmm. just before starting that i had there was something, I don't know what sparked it, but something in my mind. This is actually, if I'm not mistaken, that was like September. Yeah, that would be September. That's when the con is of 2017. So you did it in your hotel room overnight, I believe. Right. That was only probably a few months before starting the free. Uh -huh. So it, it's kind of in the same time, time period. Yeah. Well, it's not a, then on Twitter after you did this, I would see more and more commissions that you did that you would post examples of, and they got more and more uh, involved. You put a lot yeah. of work into your commissions too. So I wonder if that was another aspect. When you mentioned Pyre's finding you on Twitter, then I thought of all those commissions and how you would do interesting twistings of whomever whatever mainstream kind of person they would ask you to do a picture of. You have, you have uh, two of these volumes of hand cramps. Like who's that yeah. animal man, I guess. Mm -hmm. So you, you started kind of bending figures in weird ways. And I don't know when this is uh, 2018. Yep. So that's, <clears throat> that's around the time of the freak. Um, so, Anyway, oh, yeah, like when you see a mainstream hero like Batman done like that, you know you're you're with an interesting artist. <laughs> you know, that That's a good example for, you know, doing something familiar but very different. It's easier for people. Although if you did an issue of Batman like this, a lot of people would go insane probably. For sure, yeah. It, I get maybe, you know, 20% love it. 20% not sure, and then the rest completely want to kill me. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know. Or you have to just convince people. If if I one day kind of get one of these hit books, then all of a sudden people will learn that it's okay to like the new thing. I think that's part of the recipe. They, they have to know that it's almost accepted to a lot of people already like what I'm doing, but it's it's only the people that genuinely like it, I think. I, there are other elements that need to happen for, if I want to do a Batman book. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to imagine you getting more than like a, a, a weird backup in a Batman book, perhaps, at least yeah. in your current styles. Or it's... Um, matter of the right writer uh that's true loving my stuff and convincing someone else i feel like that's a big thing um but I me on my own i can only do so much in your mind are you like a really long-limbed bony skinny person <laughs> no i mean someone actually uh I always picture artists looking like their style, but they almost never do. That was just a thing I was into at the time. I don't know why. Um, I, I was doing a, a signing at a local comic book shop, and somebody met me for the first time, and they said, oh, I thought you'd be like seven feet tall. <laughs> <laughs> and no, it, it, yeah. the things I draw. Any, uh, people, I, I guess, Matt, is just average height. And yeah, five. Not, and not fat but not thin not super scrawny or anything i'm pretty ordinary i'm not yeah 
<clears throat> at the time, I, I no yeah, strange I just, posture. <laughs> I just like exaggerating characters yeah. and doing things with them that maybe you're not allowed to do, or you're not. Um, you know, that's what's fun for me. Like a lot of, I mean, I don't want to say I dislike drawing commissions, but I, if I had my way, I would, I would put most of my effort in my, into comics. Right. Um, so with the commissions, I, I try to make it fun for myself. And that's one of the ways I do that. So, yeah. Well, I think, <clears throat> excuse me. I had the impression your commissions were getting pretty popular though. Does that make even them now they're tempting to want that more than my actual comics? <laughs> <laughs> like, I, people, you know, go bananas for that. And right. I don't fault them for that. It's, it, I think that is mainly, um, it boils down to, you know, everyone knows Spider-Man. They already love that. There's right. nothing to learn there. It, Whereas the weird thing that I'm creating, they have no clue what it is. There's a whole mountain they have to climb just to even get what what it is I'm creating. Spider Man, there's no hill to climb. It's just it's immediate. They right. it clicks right away, and they can see clearly what it is I'm doing because I'm reinterpreting a thing they already love. So right, and so they get those people are like halfway to you, right? They exactly. get the they can get the weirdness when it's with something familiar. Then they get a little thrill at, Ooh, he's done something different with exactly. Spider Man. It, it's like, if only I could get the, all those people to see it in my actual comics, the thing I really care about. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, there's such a, a distance there between the two that it's just, it, I think it just takes time. It takes a lot of, and you just have to keep putting stuff out there that hopefully, and I know it's not for everyone. Like it, right? plenty of people will never ever like what I'm doing and that's fine. It's just, I'm pretty sure there's a lot more out there. It's just, um, like I said, there's, it, it's gonna take a lot of other Yeah, I, I mean, I think you'll slowly, more and more people will discover you. And I mean, we should mention, I guess, uh, the Faceless in the Family has been fully funded. Um, twice, twice your original goal, which is good, right? I mean, yeah, not not just because, well, a, it's more people, and b, if you can make a good amount of money out of this, that'll probably give you more time to draw, I assume, and focus on comics rather than have to, you know, do other things to get mm -hmm. make a living. Um, is this page something from an earlier or later version of the freak, or was it in the freak? And I'm just uh, no, that's that's in the freak. Okay, uh, I think the second chapter. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, I just threw in a few. You just threw in some of the freak. Um, that's oh, a cover that's that never came out. There was that. That that's a cover that never. I was paid to do it. And they just never released it. I don't know if the book got canceled or. Oh, it was like an it. alternate cover for some other book. I see. Yeah, it's a variant. Yeah. You you can maybe guess. Uh, I don't know. It, it was a book from 2018 from Image. That's all I'll say. Okay. <laughs> uh, I can't immediately guess. I, I doubt. I doubt you'll be able to. I mean, maybe someone watching can guess. I can tell you after the variant before. cover for. <laughs> I don't want to throw anyone under the bus. It's probably not their fault. Yeah, I mean, so, uh, they, they, color, colorists have their work cut out for them, coloring that. Yeah, yeah. I, I never even saw it colored, so I don't think it even got to that point. So, um, and there is another volume of hand cramps that's still for sale, a book of your commissions mm -hmm. on your uh, – Big cartel website, Matt Draws Comics. Oh, wait, people can't see what I'm seeing. So then um, you've done some Dark Horse work. Actually, before yeah. these, you did Static, right? Yeah. Which I have on my iPad. My shop failed to get me Static when I asked for it. So 
I got a digital copy and then I finally bought a copy from you at the at the con. Nice. So this comes before these works, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it was it, it was released after as a strategic after Crimson Flower. Yeah, because they thought, oh, well, if they see did a book with Matt Kin, more people will buy this. <clears throat> Um, which I wish that wasn't, um, you know, I, I would like things to be released in the, in the pat in the order of evolution, yeah, but that makes yeah, that's, that's my artist nonsense. Yeah, you know, no, that makes sense to me. I mean, but I can understand why a dark horse would want it's to a do. business at the end of the day. So, um, that really was the smarter move because <clears throat> once you did crimson flower, a few more people had eyes on your artwork yeah um this now you changed your style again here were you thinking about it or did it just happen um after the freak did you say i'm going to do something a little different than the freak oh uh, yeah it was i wanted to do um a lot of different panels but um i think maybe the timing of that was bad because I feel like it was too early to do something like this where, because one of the, I guess, complaints that I would get is that people were expecting to see the art more, but because the panels are so small, it's kind of crammed down. Mm -hmm. and you're not seeing a lot of that detail or whatever they were looking for. So it's, but I didn't, at the time, I didn't want to focus on that. I wanted to just try to, you know, play with the storytelling and capture little. Um, right. I got that sense that you were trying to do a, you were focused on the story, the character, kind of a character arc, you might say. Um, and just kind of uh, getting those little nuanced moments that in a lot of mainstream comics, you might not necessarily get. You, mm -hmm. It's more typical to get, you know, five panels a page or something like that. But I wanted to right. purposely try. I mean, here and there, like on that page, you can see there's detail. But um, yeah. if there were three panels a page, you'd be able to see it a lot more. Right. Um, which is kind of what I'm doing with Faceless. Um, it's, it's the opposite approach. It's fewer panels so that you can really see the art and I'm having to pick moments that matter more because I don't have as many panels to. Right. Um, well, why don't we switch to screen sharing with you and you can show okay. us some of the art that you've been doing more recently then for the faceless. So, I mean, here's the uh, most recent panel I did. Um, you can actually so see here's, here's the pencils. Uh huh. And there's just a lot more um, textures and right. That's kind of the biggest evolution lately. Um, and then here's well, sure. I'm sure that this is like the first page. It's a little bit cropped. Okay. First page. You can see we're doing a lot more. So this is full of, from what I've seen on Twitter, very wildly imaginative images. Not yeah. at all like Jack Kirby, but somehow makes me think of Jack Kirby in the inventiveness of it all. That I've, I mean, I haven't read the book, but um, yeah, you've got a planet the shape of a hand, right? Yeah, I could pull that up. And before we saw a building that looked like a mouth of a face and a. I think this is it. Yep, that's my uh, that's my first double page spread. Wow. Um, no, that's not for the post. Hang on. And one of the extras is a print of that page, right? Uh, mm -hmm. One of the extras in your campaign. Here it is. <clears throat> that's kind of where the story starts. Uh -huh. Yeah intense and then you've got finger cities so each finger is a different city okay cool right and they're headed to pink and there town. are rings on some of the fingers <laughs> yeah those are borders and uh there's uh -huh. like security guards that won't let them 
get in. Oh, here's actually a little video. So you can and see the detail. <clears throat> and are you still in the middle of drawing this comic or? Yeah, um, I'm on chapter four out of uh, five, but it's all written. Right. Okay. So you wrote this, you've written it all in advance. Yeah. So I know how it ends and everything. I just have to draw the rest. And you're publishing it in black and white, which I think is actually a good idea because we'll just get to revel in all this detail. I hope so. I mean, so far, uh, I've been getting a good response with uh, putting that out there. It's gonna wow, that panel's amazing. Look at all that detail. I mean, that's just insane. Yeah, this is, um, it's it's the hand planet. So there are actually warts that pop up. <laughs> that, that's basically the idea behind that. Um, that's and then you've also got, um, <clears throat> let me go back up. You've got uh, the Carpal Tunnel Gang. Because they emerge from underground, and it's a, it's a hidden. Um, even like like you can see with this guy right here. Can you see my arrow? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The armor is like a hand as well. It's kind of gripping. Oh yeah, I see yeah. that. That's crazy. <laughs> so it's it's kind of it sticks with the theme of like a hand and. And you said there's a carpal tunnel gang or something. Yeah, and it's kind of a the Another letter hand reference and uh, something artists probably all worry about carpal tunnel syndrome. Definitely. I, I've had it, had uh -oh. it pretty bad, but lately it's not so bad. So uh, another thing that's changed a lot, like going from the freak, you know, I thought when I read the freak, you reached some kind of peak and then you've changed your whole approach to line work. I think like thicker lines and thinner lines and, a lot more shading with kind of dusty dot kind of looking stuff. Was yeah. Again, something you just started happening or did you say, Hey, I want to push in a new direction and try something completely um, different. I, some of it was kind of discovered through drawing. Uh -huh. um, like, especially in those commissions. Right. It gives me, a chance to like because it's just a one-off, one and done thing. It kind of gives me a chance to, as long as I'm drawing that character, um, it gives me room to experiment. To some that extent. makes sense. So it's your one-off thing. You can say, "Hey, what would this effect look like?" Or what would that look exactly like? like? Maybe and there's all these different aspects of the character, like a cape, a belt, a mask, uh, a jacket, or whatever, and each one. I can do a different texture so I, I can try different things. And over time, I just kind of developed the idea that, you know, you can see like, all right, this vest, it's going to be one texture and one, um, one level of gray essentially. Mm -hmm. And then his shirt, that's basically black. And then his pants, you know, it's, let me, let me find more examples. Um, uh, this is actually. So most of this evolution, is it just come out of the drawing then? Like either you're drawing commissions or drawing comics, or do sometimes you look at some other art and you say, wow, I just got an idea from looking at that art that I want to try out. I try to stay away from that okay. um, because even like a lot of artists use um, what's it called? Uh, Zipitone. Uh huh. Yeah. It like that got really popular. And I think it's cool. <clears throat> and I purposely never tried it because mm -hmm. maybe stupidly because it's popular, I should be doing it. But right. me, I try to do my own thing and not follow the trends. If, if you want to be like your own artist. I mean. Yeah. And I, I think we fans and certainly 
critics and reviewers are always trying to search for ways to compare things to other things. But yeah. uh, it also helps us fans sometimes to understand something new by saying, oh, it relates to the way, like I've heard a lot of people try to struggle with your work, you know, my friends, uh, when we're talking about it and saying, well, maybe it's uh, Basil Wolverton influenced or something. But See, I never even heard of that artist until people started uh, comparing right, me to him. Right. <laughs> I, I think I realized that at some point talking to you that, that uh, influences were not the major thing that drives you. Um, I'm definitely influenced, undeniably. I'm, I'm, you know, you're always seeing things and nothing is truly original, but right. more than everything has to come from something else in some way. Yeah. Yeah. You, you can't even help that. Um, but more than anything, I would say through actually drawing, that's my, I mean, I don't know if I'd call it advice, but to any other artist, I just, I just think the, the biggest, you know, we always think that you should be looking at, oops, kind of like you said, we should be looking at um, other artists and, and there is, you can learn from them, but um, I think you're going to learn the most through just the act of drawing itself. Right. Um, well, I think maybe you're, if I remember your kind of origin was more like, was it your dad or someone had comics, but you were just drawing all the time. And, and that was one way to uh, make people happy in school and stuff doing drawings. Oh yeah. That's, so uh, you, that's the only way other I people like any attention, you know, first saw some artists that they fell in love with and started imitating them. And that's how they got into drawing or something. But I don't think that's your route into drawing. Um, yeah, I mean. Uh, like if you look at Bill Sienkiewicz, he eventually got his own style, but he started because he wanted to be Neil Adams. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, that was, well, yeah, my dad had a collection. So comics were always there. I never got into them. And I always kind of thought in the back of my head, like, oh, um, you know, maybe one day I could do this because I, I could tell it's someone who's drawing these. Um, so it's a job. It must be a job. I want to do that. But you don't know, you have no clue what goes into that or how do I even break into that. Or So through school, um, I would be the kid who uh, I would, you know, I had whatever notebook paper, and I'd be. I just I couldn't focus. I could not focus, and all I knew how to do was draw. And people loved that, and they gave me mm -hmm. a lot of compliments. And wow, you're so cool because you can do this, and so that it fed that thing. So you had the positive reinforcement every time yes. you drew, so that mm -hmm. kept you drawing, perhaps. They wanted me to be an artist more than I did. Like <laughs> everyone was telling me, like towards the end of high school, you're always. It's like, oh, you're going to go to college. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. And I wasn't sure. And everyone, it, it just kept coming up. Like you're an idiot if you don't do something with this. <laughs> I'm like, all right, I guess this is what I should be doing. And, and <laughs> I finally. Like, a, I don't know what year, but after that, after I graduated, I started sending out submissions, and that's how it started. But uh, for years, that, that didn't do anything. It, it still doesn't. I don't think it does anything. That's not how anyone breaks in. You need to just make comments right. and get better at making them. That's it. Yeah, the whole submit, submitting art, I think that stopped working 30 or 40 years ago, if it ever worked. I, I, I've never heard one artist say, oh, yeah, I sent a submission in and they hired me. <laughs> right. I think it's well, when you read like about people like Frank Miller, they, they would bring their work to Neil Adams. Somehow he, they would get into his studio, I guess. <laughs> huh. And he would critique it or tell them they were horrible and then if they I heard he brutal yeah if if they kept coming back which Frank Miller did eventually he'd say okay you're starting to look good and then he would call up someone at Marvel or DC and say I've got this person 
but that's a whole different world you know that that's the when all the artists had to live in new york and everything was probably personal and uh yeah i feel like you back then it was way harder you had to yeah you had to know people in real life or or get to know them and there, you had to live in new york you had to like you said there were all these i mean now right. and how would you know that neil adams was one of the ways you could get into comics you know that must have been accidental or something i don't know how you would know that um I mean, now, now, now it's everyone has to self-publish. Is that what you're going to say? I'm sorry. I was just going to say now the only other argument that it's still really hard is now you're competing against everyone around the world. Everyone in the world can put their stuff out there and put, I don't know, in my mind, you're, you're not really competing. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of people will say, oh, that's stupid. Of course you are. But in my mind, you're only, if you're really being yourself and you're following your trajectory, you're just competing against the old you. And right. like if you get as good as you're capable of being, that's your best shot. It's not about uh, beating the other artist or mm -hmm. because you're, if you're being as unique and good and whatever as you can, um, it's like comparing apples to oranges. So it's not yeah. really, it's not better. It's, I mean, it's all, probably more of a hustle now than it was back in the day for the artist individually, but you can build your own audience essentially. Yeah. So it's not competing. Everyone can build their own audience for what they want to do. And uh, which is why I, I'm very excited about that. This Zoop thing, even though the name Zoop <laughs> doesn't tell me anything, uh, yeah. new new Kickstarter type of place Zoop uh, is succeeding for you, so that you, I feel that this will uh, allow you to continue to be even more Matt Lesniewski. I don't know. It's as of right now, unless I get a lot more people, it's um, the amount of time that I'm spending on this. It actually isn't really. Because each book is taking me way longer because I'm doing more, I'm putting more into uh -huh. it, which I don't mind. I enjoy the process, but business wise, it just doesn't really make sense. Like, uh -uh. Well, let's hope because I was all excited. You know, you've already doubled your goal. Let's hope you triple it or quadruple it so that it makes sense financially. Yeah. I mean, and, and I think uh, you're, you'll make money off your original art. Yeah. Also, I mean, hopefully. It's, it's actually a part of the campaign, um, but that's already, that window is closed. We just haven't done the, uh, there's gonna be a, a YouTube uh, live stream with my uh, art rep, Inky Knuckles, and we're gonna be basically doing like a, it's like an auction, art auction thing, um, where I'll be, you know, just showing the pages, I don't know exactly how it's going to work, but I'm going to show the pages and then someone can comment. Yeah, I want that one and it'll have the price. So then once that's done, that, that total will be added on. Um, uh -huh. So that's only for the people who have already backed you or have backed that, you in a certain the, level? Uh, see that reward that says $0? Uh, um, oh, 53 of 53 claimed. Yeah, uh, well, it was it was unlimited, but... Only 53 people chose it. Um, so, so I couldn't claim it right now. So it's closed, you said. Yeah, unfortunately. It's okay. I think it's a good idea, but it I think I think a lot of people they didn't um, they didn't get it. They didn't understand. I don't know if I even scrolled down this far when I first Yeah, started. I think most people didn't. <laughs> I just signed up for the single issue and the um, soft cover, this level 35. Well, thanks. Which I think is a good level. Like I like to see the single issue, even though I guess you're just doing the first issue of the single issue as maybe kind of a collectible or something. Yeah, exactly. Um, um, I was tempted to get the uh, the oversized print, but I wasn't. Anyway, I <laughs> I I saw. I didn't realize the original art would is already all shut off, but that's fine. Um, yeah, it's. But hopefully I, that will that will help. 
uh, with the expenses too and make it worth the time you put into it. And just, you know, just so people know, uh, that number, <laughs> that doesn't go right into my bank account. I, most of that's going to printing and I'm splitting right, it. Right, I understand that. Yeah, so I assume you, uh, each time you add more people, more copies, then you'll be, you, it'll reduce your printing costs per copy, right? Um, yeah, yeah. Um, but I also have to make the, the prints, the figures. Right. Oh, uh, figures. I didn't even realize there were figures. Yeah. And um, for $25 right there, it's a little. Oh, there. $25 for a figure. That sounds pretty cheap. Yeah, it's a little six inch um, thing. Um, so yeah, it's 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 a lot of people. I think they see that number and they see that it's funded, and they're oh cool, you said right. it. That's not really how it works. <laughs> I, I wish. Plus, like I said, I I've spent the whole year making almost no money, just kind of getting by. Right. And, well, I'm still trying to be optimistic about it. You you have um, 15 days left, and maybe you can still double the amount, and yeah, well, that that hopefully will make it fairly worth your while at that point. I hope so. And um, and also just continue to build your individual audience. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Well, I, I'm sorry it's so tough. <laughs> no, no, no. I hope I'm not coming off like... Uh, Cause, no, because I, you know, you were publishing everything yourself and you were going to cons and I know you're not... You're even more introverted than I am and I think I would have trouble. I, you can tell me if I'm wrong, but I think you're more introverted than I am just from... I am. I'm, I've gotten better at faking it. Yeah. Uh, you know, being able to do this stuff. It's but I've learned that it's a skill that you need to build up. You I, can't just... I thought in the beginning... Oh, this is an artist's job. I just need to get good at drawing and doing the actual job part. But mm -hmm. I'm I'm learning more and more that you need to be like a personality. You need to <laughs> right. do all the stuff that I I'm not great at. And yeah. yeah, well, I I still I have high hopes that this is a beginning, not a beginning, but a next step in building up your personal following of. Uh, art fans of unusual art well i mean it's funded so it is happening at least there's that um i'm grateful for where it's gotten so far i'm just i'm just trying to be transparent because a lot of people don't understand you know i think they just right everybody thinks that the life of the artist beyond is more the glamorous than it really is and pays more than it really does yeah i hope i'm not coming off negative or I'm complaining or I'm just, uh, I, I can't help but be honest. I, right. I, well, maybe I put a lot of work in and there's been some setbacks. Yeah. Um, but think how much worse it would be you if you didn't overcome the setback and you didn't meet your goal. Definitely. I mean, uh, yeah. you're, there's different levels of success in life, but you're succeeding a, ahead of a lot of people by fulfilling that goal. And maybe you set the goal very modestly. Um, but you've already doubled it. I didn't even set the goal. Uh -huh. they, they, the zoo people determined uh, what would be needed. Huh. Um, well, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, how did you choose Zoop instead of Kickstarter? Um, well, the biggest thing was they handle all the printing and fulfillment and all of that. Ah, okay. And that has always been the thing that's scared me away from crowdfunding because... Like I said, the the art itself right. takes so long for you me. You have to be a one man publishing company to do it. Yeah, I've seen people posting pictures online. Like they have a whole team of people uh, helping that they're hiring to help pack up books. <clears throat> I don't want to do that. I just want to uh -huh. make. Whereas they handle all of that. So that's <laughs> probably why they set the goal. Then they have an idea of. At what level they can make them make a profit? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so they'll be happy that you've exceeded your goal. <laughs> anyway, right. at least one one <laughs> entity is happy in all this. I think people are going to see the finished product and they're all going to be drooling over it and want their own copy. 
Will Zoop allow you to sell copies after the um, after it's printed, after it's public, after the uh, project's finished? I'm not sure. I, I, I I'm hoping I can get extra copies. I'm not exactly sure how, how that works, but um, one one positive is um, um, I still fully own this because uh, I feel like when I get a copy of this and I'm showing it on my channel that my friends are going to want copies of it too. But hopefully most of them will watch this show and, and please, please be watching this. I mean, <laughs> the book's interesting. Check it out. Um, I, this is my first crowdfunding thing. So I had no clue what to expect. And um, it's already funded. So yeah, that's great. I, I'll let you go in a minute, but when you, I just, when you drew um, Crimson Flower, you knew it was going to be in color, right? Yeah. So did that, did you leave a little less hatching in or did you just plow ahead and it's just. It was a little bit, um, <clears throat> well, this was the first book that uh, I was doing with a, like a known writer and a bigger publisher. And so, I, you know, that classic, you know, writer, artist, colorist, letterer thing, that was my first time being a part of that. So right. I wanted to prove that I was worthy of even being there. So I took it upon myself to try to do a page a day, which is always the standard that you hear. Uh -huh. and no one told me to do that. So I just, but I did it myself to... Did you succeed in doing a page a day? As it went on, it got slower. But there were definitely some that where it was either page, page and a half, or day and a half mm -hmm. per page. So that did. I, I get the sense not that many people do a page a day anymore. But maybe I'm wrong. They they don't. <laughs> from, what I, from what I've heard, most artists are late, and it's just I guess it's accepted that they're not on time and. I don't, but I, that was, I was even with the editor. I, I don't know if I was being annoying or not, but I just thought I was doing everything I could think of to prove, hey, you want to work with me? I right. every time That's I finished nice. a page, I'd email it to the whole team. I'd be like, here's a new page. Here's a new page. Here's a new page. Like you don't have to worry about hunting me down because I've heard that's that's how what can happen. So I did everything I could think of not only going as far as I could with the art, <clears throat> doing, doing it quickly, showing it when I finished it. And yeah, I don't know. That's Well, I know this book gained you a lot. Well, in my little circle, gained you a lot of fans. And that was the first time for most people seeing you. So I think it definitely did. Because uh, whenever I did a convention last year, I did, did a decent amount. I, that was probably the book that most people came up to me and said, oh, hey, I read that. That was good. I just think uh, you need to do a lot more to keep that momentum of uh, getting your name out there. Yeah. Well, and I don't know. Uh, Mind Management Bootleg, I almost forgot the name. Uh, both both of these were colored by Bill Crabtree, and and uh, I thought he did a really good job, and I really yeah. loved it on the bootleg one. Um, maybe it was the paper. Yeah, he even um, the he. I don't know if you can tell, but the white part of it, he made it like a um, like in the bubbles. No, on the side. Oh, on the sides. Like, yeah, he made it kind of like a textured, um, almost like a canvasy type oh yeah there's little speckles almost yeah if it was printed on the the usual like slick white paper you would you see it more i think but uh you went above and beyond yeah. with just that i don't even know if people notice it i did not realize that but i think subconsciously it made me like it even more definitely yeah and it's, that's his his whole palette and just the way he did it uh, is very incredible. And this, the art in here is incredible. I love the art in both of these, but I think uh, 
in my mind, I keep sort of categorizing you having different styles. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so I thought like Crimson Flower was a new style that I saw sort of evolving in some of your sketches. And then I thought um, that the style got even more refined here. Yeah. And now it looks like in, um, in Faceless and the Family, you've taken this style and moved to some other new thing that's beyond that. Yeah, with this one, with the mind management one, I even more, I spent like two months or maybe more than two months on just those 20 pages, which is, I think, way more than what you're supposed to do. But I, again, <clears throat> no one told me this, but uh, I took it upon myself to uh, try to not be the weak link. Right. Because uh, each issue was a different artist. And I know I'm probably the least known one. So I didn't want people to get to my issue and just be like, ah, oh, who's this guy? He sucks. Or... <laughs> so I, I, I tried as hard as I could to hold my own. Yeah. And I spent the time. Um, well, it's definitely a group of fantastic artists so that you're included in that group says something also. Um, definitely. I just know that there are some comic book readers out there that are kind of harsh and <laughs> they yeah. see Some something that you don't are. like. It's uh, they, they just, you know, the pitchforks come out. Yeah. Um, but uh, for me, like the longer I have, the better I can do. Yeah. So I decided to, um, I don't know if it comes through, but I, I know, I... Well, I th it sounds like in an ideal world, someone would hire you to do six issues a year of your own comic, something like that. Yeah. Maybe uh, maybe we can uh, start a new company. <laughs> uh, I, I, I would say if I could, uh, I guess for me, the ideal would be mainly doing my own thing. Um. Have, have like one continue that's what faceless was going to be now that it's in the weird state it's in I, i'm not sure anymore but right. i wanted it to be kind of like my hellboy uh -huh. i could return to that constantly and do new stories within that world but then occasionally uh, another part of the ideal situation i could do whatever six issues of a, a batman thing my own thing that i doing my style and have fun with it. And then I return back to my Hellboy thing that, you know, just tons of people love. Like, that'd be great. <laughs> well, one and day. one could feed on the other if you did, you know, sort of some star turns here and there and then went back to your own work. Yeah. Um, Daniel Warren Johnson is the one that I think of at the moment who seems to do that. He's pretty much doing that. <laughs> yeah. it has, I mean, it seems like it. I don't know what his yeah, idea I think was. a lot of people didn't know who he was before he did Wonder Woman and, and Beta Ray Bill. Mm -hmm. and so that added, you know, there were a lot of people who loved his work before then, but it broadened the number. He, of people. The thing, that, thing with him, I, mean, I, I love what he does, mm -hmm. but uh, the thing with him that kind of interests me is a lot of people I hear talking about his stuff, even if they like it, they think it's really weird. And I don't see that. And you're like, uh-oh, they think that's weird. <laughs> exactly. So I'm thinking when they look at mine, they must be completely just confused. Yeah. So that really worries me. To me, when I look at his stuff, it, I get it completely. It's like, yeah. it's, I mean, I think it's, I think it's great, but um, I never thought of it as weird until, <laughs> and even after people keep saying that, I don't know what they're talking about. Right. I don't know, but so that kind of worries me that what I'm doing is maybe too strange because when I look at my own stuff, I don't see the weirdness. I just, I just see my own thing. I don't know. Yeah. So I, I, I know, I know, um, I can't tell what people like. I don't know what, <laughs> I really don't. I, I have no In idea. some weird way, that's your strength, I think your personal strength, which will pay off in the long run. In my I opinion. hope so. I'm, I'm hoping 
I think if you just keep doing stuff, keep putting stuff out there, that's all you can do. Well, on yeah, that I'm note, I should end end this. Um, so thanks to everyone who's watched all the way to the end. And um, there'll be lots of links for Matt down below. And uh, we'll talk again maybe after this whole project is done and you're working on your next project. Anytime. Thanks for having me on. Thanks a lot, man.